Hello everyone, this is your trivia, and today we're continuing our Sun Quan's messy inheritance series with episode four titled Lu Xun's Death. Now, last time we discussed the dueling factions forming within Sun Quan's court as the Crown Prince Sun He and the Prince of Lu Sun Ba both coveted to become Sun Quan's heir. And for many a court, especially the younger generation. Saw this as an opportunity to elevate themselves, as if they end up supporting the right heir, they would become the future of the Wu court. This influx of youth also drew the older generations into the fray, as they could not stand idly by while their sons plotted a court. And we started to see this with the Second Battle of Chuebei in 244, and the resulting court intrigue that would ultimately result in the death of Zhang Xiu. Gu Cheng and Gu Tan, and while there would be many more casualties during this nine-year span that is the battle for air, the biggest loss for Wu would be the death of their prime minister Lu Xun in the year 245. At the time, Lu Xun had largely kept himself out of the battle for air, thanks in large to his station at Wu Cheng instead of the capital city of Jianye. But despite his neutrality, he did favor the crown prince Sun He, mainly because he was a traditionalist who heeded the custom of crowning the eldest son as heir. So from time to time, Lu Xun would write to Sun Quan, reminding him the importance of keeping with tradition. But with the situation at court worsening every day, officials from both sides started to reach out to Lu Xun. Hoping that he could interfere to at least stabilize the court, as his word would carry weight with Sun Quan. At first, Lu Xun ignored these requests, as he knew the battle for air is first and foremost a family issue for Sun Quan, and with Sun Quan's temperament, one wrong step might just make the situation worse. Now, to be fair to Sun Quan, in 244, he did make an effort to stabilize his court. As he tried to forbid both princes from fraternizing with court officials and instead focus on their studies, but by 244, it was already too late. As Sun Quan received massive backlash from the court in regards to this suggestion, as officials from both sides felt that such a decree would broadcast to the other kingdoms that there was open discord within Wu, which would then open Wu up for attack. As this was a legitimate concern, Sun Quan relented. Lu Xun, on the other hand, tried to solve the problem in a different way, as he did not have the power to control the princes, but he did try to ask his fellow officials to rein in their sons and nephews from participating in this dispute, as it was mainly the younger generation that was actively involved. And when Lu Xun found out that Quan Chong's second son, Quan Ji, Had actively joined Sun Ba's side, which then resulted in the framing of Zhang Xiu and Gu Cheng after the Battle of Chuebei. Lu Xun asked Quan Chong to kill his own son as an example to all. This request obviously did not go well with Quan Chong, as their relationship would sink to rock bottom. From that point on, Sun Ba and his cohorts would see Lu Xun as a member of Sun He's group. Even though Lu Xun technically never really got involved, regardless, because of Sun Ba's stance, Sun He and his cohort also started to see Lu Xun as their savior, as given Lu Xun's position in the Wu court, support from him would mean the world to Sun He. And by this point, Sun He was right to be worried, as his own grand tutor Wu Chan. Would be imprisoned in early 245, as his repeated reminders to Sun Quan about the importance of picking the eldest son for heir finally rubbed Sun Quan wrong one day. Then, while in prison, official Yang Zhu, who was particularly favored by Sun Quan at the time, and also a staunch supporter of Sun Ba, started to slander Wu Chan around Sun Quan. To the point where Sun Quan eventually ordered for the execution of Wu Chan, and aside from slandering political opponents, Yang Zhu also tried to convince Sun Quan into switching heir, as he claimed that Sun Ba was much more talented and more befitting for the throne. 
not wanting anyone else to hear an open discussion about switching air, Sun Quan summoned Yang Zhu alone into his chambers, where he seriously considered giving Sun Ba the crown prince position. However, because Sun He had been so paranoid about his situation ever since his mother's death, and then the death of his grand tutor, he started to plant spies around his father Sun Quan, precisely to listen in on conversations such as this one. So when Sun Quan thought he was alone in his chambers with Yang Zhu discussing the merits of Sun Ba as the new crown prince, Sun He's spy was right under Sun Quan's bed, listening the whole time. Then after reporting the conversation back to Sun He, Sun He freaked out as he would leave the palace to meet with his supporter Lu Yin, who was also Lu Xun's nephew. After sharing the news that Sun Quan was now seriously considering Sun Ba as heir, Lu Yin suggested that he should go to his uncle Lu Xun in Wuchang and convince him in person to speak up for Sun He immediately. Now, important point here is that Sun He did not tell Lu Yin how he knew this conversation, as naturally he did not want others to know that he was planting spies under Sun Quan's bed. So when Lu Yin told the matter to his uncle Lu Xun, Lu Xun immediately wrote a letter to Sun Quan, warning him that switching air is a matter of great importance to the state and should not be attempted lightly, which immediately tipped Sun Quan off that his private conversation had been leaked. Now, Sun Quan was convinced that only Yang Zhu knew of this conversation. So he immediately summoned Yang Zhu, asking if he had told Lu Xun the details of their conversation. Confused, Yang Zhu denied this as he pointed out that the only official who had left the capital recently and gone to Wuchang is Lu Yin, who was Lu Xun's nephew. So Sun Quan immediately summoned Lu Yin and questioned how he knew about the conversation. Knowing that he cannot review Sun He's role in this, Lu Yin wisely pointed the finger at Yang Zhu as he claimed that Yang Zhu had told him about the conversation right after leaving the palace that day. Feeling betrayed, Sun Quan immediately had both Yang Zhu and Lu Yin thrown into prison as he would torture both of them, hoping to discover if there were any others involved. Now Lu Yin would keep his mouth shut as he kept to his story that Yang Zhu had told him everything. On the other hand, Yang Zhu, after a few days of being tortured, finally gave up as he would admit to sharing information with Lu Yin. Of course, Yang Zhu never did this, but after being tortured for so long, Yang Zhu just wanted to make it stop as it was a hopeless case for him to begin with since Sun Quan was convinced that they were the only two people in his chamber that day. So clearly, only Yang Zhu could be the leak. But to get back at Lu Yin for framing him, Yang Zhu would also list out 20 made-up crimes that apparently Lu Xun was involved in, as he now just wanted revenge against the Lu clan, for he was soon sentenced to death by Sun Quan, who now firmly believed that Yang Zhu was an agent of Lu Xun, who was a supporter of the crown prince Sun He. So after Yang Zhu was executed, Sun Quan would approach Lu Xun with Yang Zhu's list of 20 made-up crimes, as Sun Quan wanted answers about Lu Xun's involvement with the battle for air. Innocent and confused, Lu Xun couldn't state his case as his only witness, Lu Yin, could no longer walk back from his lies as he would rather sacrifice his own uncle than his crown prince Sun He. So, left without any way to explain his innocence, Lu Xun would die of anger, as it was stated in the history books, but I think a better explanation is probably a heart attack or stroke, as he was already quite elderly at 63. Now, his son, Lu Kang, would eventually clear his father's name six years later, in 251, when Lu Xun would then finally get his posthumous title of Zhao Hou, meaning bright, but for the time being, Lu Xun would die in disgrace after more than 40 years of outstanding service to Wu. 
Now, Lu Xun's death will not mark the end of the battle for air, as this constant infighting and political intrigue would continue for five more years. But our episode will come to an end, as we'll continue tomorrow, to discuss the resolution of the battle for air. So hopefully you all enjoy this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!